Number three, don't hand cash to cashiers. What? Hey guys, it's Roy. Today I'm going to be reacting to 11 things not to do in Japan. And uh, it's pretty popular and it's like a must-see video before you travel to Japan. So I want to see what they're saying about things not to do in Japan and I want to see if they're correct or not. So, let's get to it, shall we? Japan has a rich and complex culture that make it a favorite travel destination of many. But it also makes the country really easy for tourists to embarrass themselves in. Here are 11 things that you should absolutely not do while in Japan. Number one, don't tip. Tipping is not a part of Japanese culture, and someone will probably come running after you with your money if you do. Now in some restaurants you'll see a vending machine where you just insert your money and you choose whatever food item you want, so there's actually no waiter that you could tip. Either way, don't leave a tip because it's actually considered insulting to the waiter. Okay, so about tipping, he's correct, you're not supposed to tip in Japan. People tend to think that tipping is rude in Japan, but no, it's nothing about like politeness or rudeness, it's just that tipping is not in our system. So if you try to tip them, they just can't get it and their boss won't allow them to take it. So you're just gonna make him in an awkward situation. So don't tip guys. Number two, cover your tattoos. Tattoos in Japan are generally associated with criminals and Yakuza. Because of this, tattoos are frowned upon in Japanese society, and most pools and bathhouses bar anyone with a tattoo from entering. Okay, about tattoos. I also made a video on this on TikTok. Um, he is like 80% correct. Tattoos are kind of frowned upon in Japan. The downside of having a tattoo in Japan is that sometimes you will not be able to enter a facility where you show your skin, like beaches or public baths or pools or yeah, anything like that. But recently, because we have so many foreigners coming in Japan for tourism and stuff, tattoos are kind of getting more accepted, especially if you're a foreigner. So you don't have to think too serious on it. We know that um, tattoos are kind of seen as art and fashion and not just associated with bad things. And uh, we're getting lenient on those ideas, so it's fine. Don't worry, um, diversity is a key word in Tokyo 2021, at least inside me, <laughs> I hope. Um, so yeah, don't don't worry too much on tattoos. Number three, don't hand cash to cashiers. What? Now this may seem like a contradictory statement, but uh -huh. in Japan, almost every convenience store will use a tray that you're supposed to place the money on. This is used at a convenience so that the coins don't fall everywhere, and also so that everyone can see exactly what's happening with the money at all times. Okay, this is completely cap. <laughs> You can hand money, like people hand money with hand to hand, like the tray is like non-existent. But that was until before COVID. Recently after COVID, because people don't want hand to hand interactions, now you're supposed to use a tray. But this video was out like in 2017 or something, right? So this is cat. like when the video was released, you were allowed to give money hand to hand, like nobody give, you know, a damn. But don't do it now because people are kind of, you know, a little bit protective on hand to hand interactions. Use the tray, safer. Number four, Japanese only restaurants. Now this may seem kind of crazy, but some Japanese restaurants will not allow any foreigners into their establishments. That is because while the Japanese can be very friendly and welcoming, there are some aspects of their culture that make them a little xenophobic. There's really no way to tell whether or not a restaurant is Japanese only, but you'll know pretty quickly as soon as you walk in. Usually what happens is a waiter will wave his or her hands no, you'll be told to leave, or any combination of those. Okay, I don't know what to say on this. Um, I'm Japanese, so I've never had anyone deny me entering a restaurant, but I don't think this is like relevant. I mean, I bet if you search throughout the whole Japan, there will be a few restaurants like that because some people are just... But no, this is not common, especially in Tokyo. Recently, like during the Olympics, because people were coming in Japan, a hotel actually made a Japanese-only elevator and it got criticized so much. A hotel is like that, so I bet if there's a restaurant that had a Japanese-only sign, they'd be cancelled. It's 2021, guys. Number five, don't talk on trains. The volume of your voice is extremely important in Japan, as everyone is hyper-aware and very respectful that they share their space with others. That means talking loudly or speaking on the phone in trains is a definite no, and you should avoid it as best you can. Yeah, this is 
Totally true. It's not like there's a rule that says don't talk in trains, but like you'll notice once you enter a Japanese train, it's gonna be so quiet inside that your voice is gonna be like so loud and people are gonna start looking at you if you talk loudly. I mean, people do talk on trains, so like, I mean, I talk with my friends on trains, but um, at like any situations, talking on the phone on a train is um, seen as very bad manners, so don't do that. You can talk with your friends on the train or people on the train, but not on the phone. I don't know why there's borders there, but <laughs> yeah, that's something. Number six, proper chopstick use. This is a big one because chopsticks are used to eat almost everything in Japan. The main things not to do with your chopsticks are not to eat directly from common dishes. Always take the food and put it on your plate first and then eat it. Don't point chopsticks at people as it is considered very rude. Don't cross them and don't leave them sticking out of a rice bowl as that is part of funeral ceremonies. And don't rub your chopsticks together after you break them apart because that's rude and disrespectful to the chef by assuming he purchases poor quality chopsticks. Okay, this is kind of... True, but don't worry too much. Japanese manners on chopsticks are crazy. I know there's like so many and I don't I don't even know how many manners there are here. I mean, that's for Japanese people. If you're Japanese, you're you're fucked, but <laughs> it's fine. I don't even know how many manners there are. As far as I know, I can list up hold chopsticks correct. Do not stab things with chopsticks. Do not um, stab your rice with chopsticks. Do not lick your chopsticks. Do not point at people with chopsticks. Do not push your food inside your mouth with your chopsticks. I already know six and I bet there's like another 35 or something like that. Okay, but yeah, anyways, there's like so many manners that we don't even know. So don't worry, it's fine. Just enjoy your food with the way how you want to eat it. Everything's good. Number seven, don't wear shoes in the house. Yeah. Like most people, the Japanese don't want the dirt from outside getting in the house. They take it one step further though and provide slippers and shoe cubbies at the front door. Even some restaurants will ask customers to take their shoes off before coming inside. Okay, this is like so true. Um, shoes inside houses and some places are like a no-no. In Japan, we don't wear shoes in houses. Especially when you enter a Japanese household, there's a space where you put your shoes off. So yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, I know this is bad news for those uh, stinky feeders, right? I know, I have stinky feet myself and I get nervous when I go to like Japanese restaurants and take shoes off. <laughs> Number eight, drinking etiquette. This is a big one if you got with any Japanese while in Japan. There are subtle rituals that show respect towards the person you're drinking with. The first is whenever you receive a drink, always receive it with two hands to show respect towards the person pouring. Also never pour your own drink first as it's considered selfish. You should pour others drinks and then put the bottle down and someone else will take it up and pour your drink for you. If you're not trying to get absolutely hammered, make sure that when you're done, you leave your drink full. Because the way it works is whenever someone sees an empty glass, they'll just immediately pour you another one. Things can get crazy pretty quickly if you're not careful. Okay, um, this one, just don't care about it. Don't worry, this is like business manners. Um, upon drinking, we have a lot of business manners, but that only occurs for business, so. But to like give you an idea of like what kind of manners we have, one, you don't pour your own drink, you pour the other person's first and then they will pour it back to you. Two, when you pour a drink, the label, you know, like label on the bottle has to be on top. Three, when you do the toast together, your glass has to be lower if you are in a lower rank. But like those are all business manners, don't worry. Number nine, how not to eat sushi. Fish have been the central part of the mm. Japanese diet for centuries and they've developed tons of different ways to better enjoy the fish so it's not a bad idea to get to know some of them. The first mistake that most people make is ordering a bunch of sushi at once, instead of a little bit at a time, which they recommend. It's because the temperature of the fish actually matters, and you're supposed to eat it as soon as it comes onto your plate. That's why you sit right at the bar in most sushi places in Japan. The next big mistake that people make is dunking the rice directly into the soy sauce, which makes it absorb way too much. The correct way to do it, if you're gonna do it at all, is to flip the fish over, so that just the back side of the fish touches the soy sauce. This allows the soy sauce to enhance the flavor of the fish, but without drowning it out. Okay, this is cat. No, eat sushi however you want. Nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> so to give you a little more detail, we have like, I guess two types of sushi places. One, those fast food types where we call revolving sushi, where sushi comes around and you just take it from the belt. If you've ever seen it, it's also in my TikTok. For those, just do whatever you want, take as many as you want, eat however you want, nobody will care. Don't worry, it's fine. 
And the second type is like those real authentic sushi places where there's like a sushi counter and you have this dude like making sushi for you. Um, those places are tend to be more high end, a little pricey. And so they require a little bit of more manner, you know, just like when you go to like a real French restaurant, they have like a dress code and everything. And it's like a course and stuff and you know, all that. Same with sushi places, but still don't be too strict on it. And nobody will care however soy sauce, however way you dip your sushi in soy sauce. Well, the only reason why people say don't put the rice in the soy sauce is just because the rice will crumble when it gets wet. That's the only reason. Maybe it's manners, but don't worry. Nobody's, you know, nobody cares that much. Eat however you want. <laughs> Number 10, don't expect to use your card. Japan is a cash-based society, and they're generally skeptical of credit cards. So almost every place that you'll visit will use cash. Don't worry though, because the 7-Eleven ATMs will work with any card and are open 24 hours a day. It's not unusual for Japanese businessmen to grab 30 or 40,000 yen before they leave the house. Like I said, everything here is done in cash. Cap, this is perfectly cap. <laughs> Credit cards are valid, don't worry. Um, I personally use e-payment and credit card for most of my payments throughout the month. I barely use cash, I barely have cash on me, and recently I even stopped like having a wallet around with me, so it's fine. If you're going to like traditional places or rural places, then yes, maybe you'll have to have some cash on you because those places do not have the machines where you can, you know, swipe swipe the card card. <laughs> But if you're like visiting around the cities or big city areas, credit cards work perfectly fine. Don't worry. Last but not least, number 11, receiving business cards. This is another good one if you plan on meeting people while in Japan. When exchanging business cards, always receive the card with two hands and study it carefully before putting it away. Don't shove it into your back pocket carelessly as it may be interpreted as being rude. It's best to carefully place it into your wallet to show that you respect them and the business they work for. Uh, I mean, yeah, this one is true, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know why, business card trading is like a thing in Japan. It's like Pokemon card trends. <laughs> There's a rule to it. So when you basically do it, you have to hand out your business card with two hands, and then you gotta kind of like exchange it, and then get it with two hands, and then you have to keep that out until that person is there in front of you present. And then once your meeting or whatever is over, and it's like, okay, we should go now, then you kind of like slowly, slowly put it in your pocket. <laughs> If you're not coming here for business, don't give up. <laughs> um, okay, I guess that was the end of the video. Some of the some of the things were correct, but uh, a lot of things here are I think are over exaggerating, and especially if you're coming as a tourist or if you're just staying short term, you don't have to care that much. We do have manners; it does exist, but we are pretty lenient for people from other cultures. This mostly applies to Japanese locals. The one basic rule of traveling anywhere in the country is just not being ignorant and rude. And if you just don't step out of those boundaries, I think you can just have fun without thinking about all these. We're not too strict. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. I hope you have a good day. See you guys.